What up, nerds? My name is Clay Cooper from Prep Expert. I've got a perfect score on the SAT and a perfect score on the ACT. And today, I'm going to show you how to solve polynomial long division questions on both tests. So polynomial division questions show up a lot on both the SAT and the ACT. And the reason I wanted to talk about them is because a lot of my students seem to be really intimidated by them. And I certainly understand that. They can look really hard. But the reality is, if you're familiar with how to do polynomial division, these questions are super easy. And there are actually a few different ways that you can do polynomial division questions. You can do polynomial long division, which is what I'm going to show you. You can also do synthetic division, or you can substitute abstracts with tangible. If you're not sure how to substitute abstracts with tangibles, you can find an explanation of that in Prep Experts materials. If you're a Prep Expert student, we explain how to do it in our course. Essentially, that's a shortcut that allows you to solve this question without doing any division at all. But even if you don't know how to substitute abstracts with tangibles, you can solve a question like this using either polynomial long division or synthetic division. Just a brief note about synthetic division, I know a lot of students like it, and you're more than welcome to use it. If you know how to do it and it works well for you, then hey, be my guest. Uh, as long as you get the question right, then whatever you do is fine. What I'm going to show you how to do, though, is polynomial long division. The reason I prefer this one is just it's the most flexible approach. It'll work on the widest variety of problems, uh, and it's less abstract and symbolic than synthetic division. Synthetic division, if I understand it correctly, is just kind of a symbolic form of what we're about to do anyway. So why not just do the real thing? So let me show you how to do it. Now again, if when you see a question like this, you think something along the lines of, man, there's no way I can do this, then I definitely understand. Uh, it's a very intimidating looking question. But if you can divide two into 31, then you can solve this polynomial division question using polynomial long division. I'm gonna walk you through the process and show you how similar it is to the process that you learned in like fourth or fifth grade for dividing two into 31. Now note, I don't mean can you tell me what the answer is of two divided into 31. What I mean is can you execute the division procedure that you learned a long time ago to find the answer for two divided into 31? I think you probably can. Let me refresh your memory. As we do that, I'm going to show you what polynomial long division looks like alongside it. So we'll kind of go through each of these step by step together so you can see how similar they are. And I think that'll give you a lot of confidence that you can use polynomial long division on test day. So the first thing we need to do in old school division, when I'm dividing two into 31, what's the very first step? Well, I ask myself, how many times does two go into three? And two goes into three one time. So I write that one right here and I'm off to a great start. So now looking back at polynomial division, I do basically the same thing. The biggest difference between polynomial division and old school division is that when I'm doing polynomial division, when I'm on the step of the procedure that involves asking how many times one thing goes into another, I only pay attention to the highest ordered term of the divisor. So in this case, that's x. In other words, I disregard the plus 1 when I'm doing this step of the process. I only pay attention to the x. I ask myself, how many times does x go into x squared? instead of how many times does x plus one go into x squared. So that's the biggest difference between polynomial division and old school division, and as long as you can remember that, you should be fine. So again, I just asked, how many times does two go into three? The answer was one, so I write that above the three, and I'm off to a great start. Back to polynomial division, I ask, how many times does x go into x squared? Uh, another way to think about that is, what is x squared over x? It's not two, it is x, right? So how many times does x go into x squared? It goes in x times. I write that above the x squared and I'm off to a great start. Now back to old school division. What do I do with that one that I just found? I take it and I multiply it by my divisor two. One times two is two. I write the product just below the three. Back to polynomial division, I do the same thing. I take that x that I just found and I multiply it by my whole divisor, x plus one. And what do I get? x times x plus 1 is x squared plus x. Awesome. So back up to old school division. What do I do now? Well, I take that 2 that I just found and I change its sign. I make it negative, right? And then I take the sum. So 3 minus 2 is 1. 
All right, I'm gonna do the same thing in polynomial division. The first step is to change the sign of my product, but that means change the sign of the whole product, both terms. So I'm gonna put parentheses around it and put a negative outside it. Now, what is x squared minus x squared? It's nothing, zero. What is 3x minus x? It is 2x. So I write the 2x right there. And again, I'm following along old school division nicely. All right, so back up in old school division. What's my next step? I drop this one down, right? And I put it next to this one. So now I have 11. And I'm gonna ask myself, how many times does two go into 11? It goes in five times. So back to polynomial division. What do I do next? I drop down this plus five and I get two X plus five. And now I ask myself again, how many times does just X go into two X? It goes in two times. X goes into two X two times. So I write that product right there and I'm caught up to old school division. Now back up to old school division. What do I do with that five that I just found? I multiply it by my divisor two and I write the product down here. Same thing in polynomial division. What do I do with that two that I just found? I multiply it by my divisor x plus one and I get two times x plus one is two x plus two. So back up to old school division. What do I do with that 10 that I just found? Change its sign and take the sum. 11 minus 10 is one. Back to polynomial division. What do I do? Again, change the sign and again, make sure you change the sign of the whole product. That means change the sign of each term in the product. Now, what is two x minus two x? It's nothing. What is five minus two? It's three. All right, back up to old school division. What do I do with that one? Well, there are no other numbers to drop down and two doesn't go into one. So I have 15 remainder one. That one is left over and I can't divide two into it. It is the remainder, it is what is left. So back to polynomial division, same thing. There's nothing left to drop down here and X doesn't go into three. So I've got X plus two remainder three. Now, if you notice, none of the answer choices say anything about a remainder. So what do I do from here? Well, if I asked you how many times two goes into 31, you're not likely to say 15 remainder one. What would you really say? You'd probably say 15.5 or maybe 15 and a half. Same thing, right? Well, you may never have noticed, but 15 and a half is actually just 15 plus one half, which if you look closely is actually our quotient of 15 plus our remainder of one over our divisor of two. Pretty cool, huh? That's where 15 and a half comes from. Again, it's the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. And we're gonna do the same thing in polynomial division. What's my formal answer? It's gonna be my quotient, x plus two, plus my remainder of three over my divisor, x plus one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our answer. X plus two plus three over X plus one. And polynomial division can really be that simple. And that's all you need to know to solve polynomial long division questions on both the SAT and the ACT. Make sure to smash that like button if you found this video helpful. You can also subscribe to Prep Expert's YouTube channel for other videos just like this one. In fact, we'd love for you to throw us a comment below this video and let us know what you want us to cover in the next video. What do you want advice on from a two-time perfect score? There's also a coupon code in the description below this video that you can use for discounts on any of our products on our website, prepexpert.com. You can use that coupon code to get a discount on a course with myself or another instructor or to sign up for tutoring if you prefer that. So until next time, keep working hard.